let r of t be a vector function with a constant length. So what I really know by this statement is I have some vector function that when I take its magnitude, I always get the same number c. It has constant length, right? And think about what r of t does. For every value of t, r of t points from the origin to that point on the curve. All right, so whatever value of t I plug in, this is saying that I'm always c away from the origin. Well, if I'm always the same distance away from the origin, that means whatever r of t does, the curve lives on a sphere. So on this sphere, I have a kind of spiral going down. And I'm thinking about starting at the North Pole and the position vector traces out this weird little spiral all the way down that ends at the South Pole. Okay, r of t is a vector function of constant length, means it's drawing a curve in space that has to live on a sphere of radius c because that's what vector functions do. That's what position vectors do. So now I wanna talk about the relationship between r of t and v of t, the first derivative, the velocity function. Okay, well, r of t points to a point on a sphere. v of t is the first derivative, right? It's the velocity, and the velocity is always tangent to the direction of motion. And so think about that. R of t points from the origin, which is at the center of my sphere, to a point on this graph. So R of t literally pointing across the radius of the sphere to a point on the graph where my velocity vector is. See if you can think up the relationship between R of t, which is pointing to a point on a sphere from the origin, so I'll try to crudely draw what's going on here, right? R of t points from the center of the sphere to that point. And the velocity vector, which has to be tangent to the curve and therefore tangent to the sphere. What's the relationship between the, those two vectors? What's the relationship between the radius of the sphere and a tangent line to the sphere? Okay. I really would love to know what y'all just said, or if you just fast forward until I started talking again. Um, but I'm hoping that you thought maybe those two vectors are perpendicular, because they are. And based on this assumption, that r of t has constant length, we can actually prove that the position and velocity vectors are perpendicular to each other in this case. I know that r of t in magnitude is equal to a constant C. Well, I also know that the magnitude squared would be equal to C squared. One of the neat things about squaring the magnitude of a vector is that lets me think about the dot product. So the magnitude of R of T squared is C squared, which means R dot R is equal to c squared. The dot product of a vector with itself is the magnitude squared. And what I want to do now is take the derivative of both sides of that equation. The derivative of the constant c squared is zero. The derivative of r dot r, there's a rule for taking the derivative of a dot product. And I'm hoping that you've reviewed that in your textbook. The dot product rule says this, that this would be r dot the derivative of the second vector plus the second vector dot the derivative of the first. Well, since these two vectors are the same, I actually got the same expression twice. So 2 r dot dr dt is equal to 0. Dividing by two, I get the position dot the velocity is zero. And by definition, when the dot product is zero, I have orthogonal vectors. R and dr dt are orthogonal, which means that R and the velocity are perpendicular. Okay. 
Below this video, you should see a link to a GeoGebra app that actually has a curve graphed on a sphere with the position R and the velocity vectors included so that we can check out an example where we see that these two vectors really are perpendicular to each other.